propose a question to you today. Uh, do you know uh, that this Jesus uh, that you have, uh, this Jesus, uh, amen, that you have, uh, he can heal your body. Uh, hallelujah. He can deliver you. Uh, he can save you, uh, this Jesus. Praise the Lord. Do you know? It's a deep question. We're all here today, this, this morning. For all different reasons. Praise the Lord that you may be seated. They had a dinner a while ago, and there was a lot of people invited, and there are people that showed up just to show up. There are people that came to try to uh, incriminate Jesus. There were people that came because there was food. <laughs> There were people that came because they wanted to talk to Jesus. They wanted to listen to the teacher, listen to the master, and see what he had to say about the issues of the day and the Torah, the, the, the five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch that they had. There were people that came for all kinds of reasons. But there was one that came simply to worship. There was one, the Bible says, that when she got there, she knelt down at his feet and she began to break open the box of alabaster, the oil, and began to pour it onto his feet. Uh, the Bible says she anointed his feet uh, and she washed them with her tears and she dried his feet with her hair. And she began to kiss him on the feet. This woman came not for the food. She didn't come for the entertainment. She didn't come to question Jesus and to try to uh, entrap him, but she came simply to worship. Amen. I wonder how many of us today have made up in our mind this morning that I am just here to worship Jesus. Oh, what kind of church could we have here this morning, saints of God, if we just showed up to worship him, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to have that kind of church every time I come into the house of God. I quickly want to make some announcements, but I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. There are many who are sick this morning. If you know of them, keep them in prayer. Put their, take their names before the Lord and ask God to heal them and touch their bodies. I know Sister uh, Selena is very sick. Let's remember, I, that's, I have a report of her, and there are others who are sick, and they're not here this morning. Let's keep them in prayer. I want to remind the church to, after service, please greet brother and sister well. Tell them how much you love them. Amen. Amen. Tell them how good they're going to do in Southland Tabernacle. Remember, you're from Mount Morris, and, and I told Brother Well this morning, I, I taught you everything I know in a month. Now go use it. <laughs> Be a blessing. Be a blessing to Southland Tabernacle. Pastor McGee and Bishop Henson. Be a blessing there, Brother and Sister Well. Amen. Make sure you greet them before today, before you leave church today. Also, no Bible study next week. Be with your families. I think it's Christmas Eve. Tuesday is Christmas Eve. You have parties to go to. You have family to, to be with. Let's do that. Uh, no home friendship group. Is that all right? Let's make sure we, we're with our families and we spend time with friends and families and strangers, whoever. Amen. Turn off all cell phones. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, January 5th, put this in your calendars. It's the day after the install service, which, which is January 4th. It will be Sunday. Service at 10 a.m. Sunday school. 10 a.m. Amen. So, if you get here at 10 you're late. Amen. Everybody's looking at me. If you get here at 10, you're late. You need to try to be here at 9.50, 9.55. Get the kids. Uh, make sure they get settled in, into Sunday school. The teachers will be in the rooms uh, waiting for them. 
You don't want to come in and disturb the, the service. Am I okay, Brother Star? Amen. If you can, if you can be here at 10, uh, be on time. Be here at nine. If you could be here at 10, be here at 9.55. <laughs> I appreciate, a pastor appreciates that. We're going to have adult Sunday school from, from 10 a.m. to 10.45. At that time, the children will come back out into the sanctuary, and then we will start prayer. And you may use the bathroom, take care of the kids real quick if there's something they, they need, uh, see to their needs. At 11 o'clock, we'll start worship. Praise the Lord, and we'll get out of here around whatever the Lord's timing is, around noon or what. It won't be too late. Maybe, maybe one. <laughs> Amen. How's that sound, church? We need Sunday school. Praise the Lord. And I'm excited about the teachers and, and everything that's, that's, that's happening. We've we got to get ready. We're going to be ready. Praise the Lord. And I think that's all my announcements. If you would stand, I want to get to the word of God this Sunday before Christmas. There's kind of a, a Christmas theme around the world today in all churches everywhere you go. There's a Christmas theme. And, and we know we know that Christmas is a day we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We know it's not maybe exactly the, the day that Jesus was born. That's not important. What's important is that he is born. Amen. Hallelujah. That's important. But today we're, we're going to uh, get into the word. John chapter 3, verse 16. A very familiar scripture. Very familiar scripture. Probably, I think, the, the one scripture that is translated in more languages than any other scripture in the world. John chapter 3, verse 16. Most of us can quote it. Most of us have heard it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. I want to preach this morning, and, and believe me, I, I want to preach the greatest gift ever given. The greatest gift ever given. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, I love you. Praise the Lord. Welcome to First Apostolic Church. I'm so glad you're here. What an interesting verse of Scripture, John chapter 3, verse 16. It's, if anybody is familiar, there is a history about this verse. There, anybody ever seen a sporting event where someone has the sign John 3, 16? Do you know that's one person that does that? He tra he, there was a time he traveled all to all these sporting events, and he tried to get into them, the Super Bowl, the World Series, um, the Stanley Cup, any important event that was taking place around the United States. He would travel there, but he wouldn't buy a ticket. He would sneak in. I don't think that's very Christian. <laughs> he would sneak in, and he would try to, and he would sneak his sign in. John 3.16, and, and he would show the whole world, John 3.16. And I'll be honest with you, I have a lot of friends that don't go to church, have never been to church, but they know John 3.16 because they've seen it at sporting events. Amen. They've seen it there. So he was evangelizing people without even knowing it, I guess. 
But John 3.16, it's a beautiful, beautiful scripture. It really tells us and, and defines to us love. Love, the definition of love. And I may hurt somebody's feelings this morning because how what you thought love was may not be what God thinks love is. In today's society, love is kind of like a stock market. It goes up and down. <laughs> Your love for somebody can go up when they're favorable to you and when they do something you like, and it can go right back down again when they're not favorable to you or when they do something you don't like. Uh, but how many know today that Jesus loves you no matter what? He has what's called in the Greek agape love for you. You know what that means? That means that he has willed himself to love you. Even when you're unlovable, even when you do things against his word, uh, even when you contradict him, uh, even when you sin and you mess up uh, and you make a mistake uh, and you go back to the Father, uh, you know what he says? Uh, I love you. He has that kind of love for you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He loved everyone. He doesn't love you any more or any less than he loves me. Thank God. You can't do anything. You can't do any good works to make him love you more. Thank God. You can't do any terrible works to make him love you less. Thank God. But he loves everyone. The Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. We know what that means, that he gave himself a sacrifice. Love is loving everyone and giving yourself a sacrifice. Think about that. Love is sacrificial giving without expecting anything in return. He gave himself a sacrifice in hopes that you would receive it. He presented love to you in hopes that you would return Love to him. So pure love, love is loving somebody even if you don't know them, Sister Grace. But I love you. I didn't know you, but I love you. It may cost you. It's sacrificial. It means that even though my wife refused to squeeze the toothpaste at the bottom where you're supposed to, Instead, at the top, she gets the last bit out, and guess who has to fix it? Comes behind and fix it? Me. If you're wondering, it's me. But the Bible says, and if I, were to have, if I am going to have godly love for her, Brother Jason, I have got to love her, even though she does that. Praise the Lord. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to talk this morning about the greatest gift ever given. I've received some good gifts, and I've received some not-so-good gifts. Think of, anybody ever watched a Christmas story? It's on 24 hours a day. Ralphie, anybody know I'm talking about? The Christmas story, Ralphie. At the end of that story, he gets a gift from his aunt, his aunt. It's a bunny outfit. And he said, does she know I'm a boy? You know, we get some gifts with good intentions, but we just, what were they thinking? <laughs> My aunt, I remember when I was young and probably like six or seven years old, and she lived in California, and she sent us a gift box for Christmas from California, and we were so excited because California felt like a different country. It was so far away from Michigan. And we open it up, and we get into this gift box from Christmas gifts from Aunt Vicky in California, and we see what will be what is today still Hello Kitty stuff. It had like paper, notebooks, pencils, and and me and my brothers are looking. Does she know we're boys? We didn't want this Hello Kitty, Hello Kitty stuff, which is I and and you know her excuse was it's very popular. Well, I don't care. I'm a boy. I didn't I didn't want that. I remember getting an espresso machine 
from a, from a good brother of mine for a Christ, Christmas gift. I'm telling you, it was the best gift I've ever gotten in my life. I love this espresso machine. I would make coffee, espresso shots, and blend it with hot chocolate and all kinds of things. I'd make all kinds of drinks, and, and I enjoyed that thing. She knows it was on the counter. It was, I would just use it every day, every day. And, and you know what happened eventually? It broke. It didn't last. But at the time, it was the greatest gift I'd ever gotten. My wife got a very, a gift that was given out of love. I was Christmas shopping with my daughters. They were about this big, this old. I don't know how old that is. They were about, they were about this, this old. And we were at Kohl's, and we were coming up the elevator, and we were looking for gifts for mom. I took them for shopping to get a Christmas gift for mom. And, and we got off the elevator, and you know how they have little stacks of things everywhere. And as we were walking away, Emily said, Dad. And I'm, what? And she said, Mom's going to love it. I said, love what? I turned around, and, and she was holding in her little hands a Jingle Bell watch. It was a watch of little bells all, all over it. And I looked at that, and I was, <laughs> my first thought was, how much is it? <laughs> so I didn't say nothing. I wanted to see the, the price. I turned it over, $7.99. Mom's going to love it. She's going to love this. She was so excited. We wrapped that. And it was the only gift I think they didn't tell her what it was. They tell usually everything. You want to know what it is? Guess what, you know, how kids are. That Christmas morning, none of us could wait for her to open it, especially me. I was so excited. I want to <laughs> see this face. <laughs> she... <laughs> It was given out of love. She opened that gift up, and she looked at it. She was so confused. She could not understand why I would let the kids buy a Jingle Bell watch for her on Christmas morning. And it was love that compelled me. It was love that, that made me do it. It was love for, my, for little Emily, because if I would have told her no, she would have been crushed. She probably would have been a different person this, today. Amen. So I had, I had to do it. But that wasn't the greatest gift my wife has ever received. My espresso machine, it wasn't the greatest gift I have ever received. Abraham, he, he told about the greatest gift that was to come. When God spoke to him and said, it's time, get up, go to this place, go to the mountain, you must sacrifice your son there. Abraham got the wood and got his son, and he got some servants, and he headed towards the place that God told him to go. And as he saw the place, he stopped, and he told his servants to stay here, and he got his son. He, he told his son to carry the wood. He grabbed the fire, and he started towards the hill, started towards the place where God told him to sacrifice the gift his promise. He headed towards that place, and it's interesting how the promise was carrying the wood. One day, there'd be another person carrying their own cross on their way up that same very hill. But as Abraham was nearing the spot of sacrifice, his son, curious, said, Dad, we have the wood and, and we have the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Abraham, prophetically speaking, in Genesis chapter 22, 8, he said, My son, God, will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Amen. Abraham was able to talk about the coming gift, the greatest gift ever given. The greatest gift ever given prophesied. Samson received the gift of strength. With his strength, he was able to destroy many enemies, but he was not strong enough to resist Delilah. 
the strength, the physical strength he got didn't do anything for him resisting Delilah. Sometimes we think that if I was only a little stronger, I'd be better. But it's not physical strength that you need. Amen. It's the gift I'm talking about is what you're going to need. Solomon received the gift of wisdom. He did so much with it. He was so wise. He was able to write so many proverbs and, and put down into, into scripture so much wisdom because he had the gift of wisdom. But he was not wise enough to put away false idols. The gift of wisdom is great. The gift of strength is great. But it's not good enough. We need a better gift. We need a better gift. Isaiah was given the gift of prophecy. He was able to tell of the gift to come, but he could not see it. In one of his prophecy times where he was given prophecy out, he began to write in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Oh, Isaiah, you were able to tell of the gift to come, but you never received it. You never saw him. Hallelujah. There's a lot of great gifts you could give on Christmas. There's a lot of gifts I've already received, and I thank you for all the gifts, the cards, the, the things that, the, the, the food, the cookies, the things that I, I've received. And it's interesting when you think of the Christmas card. How many have received a Christmas card? How many have never received a Christmas card? One, one day I gave a Christmas card to somebody, Brother Ray. This man had come from South Carolina. He was in his 50s, and he come up from South Carolina to Michigan, and he helped me with my air conditioning. He helped me with my heater, my furnace, and my house, and helped me install, helped me run electricity to my garage. Just helped me with all kinds of things. Taught me. You know, I was in my 30s. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. I learned a lot from him. Christmas time came, and my wife and I were getting Christmas cards together. And we said, whoa, let's not forget Brother Ray. We got to send him a Christmas card. So we put one together for him. We went to church and we handed out our Christmas cards, as the tradition is. And I went to give one to Brother Ray. He said, what's this? I said, it's a Christmas card, Brother Ray. Merry Christmas. He said, a Christmas card? I said, yeah. You know, people give them out around Christmas time. He was confused. I, I said, what's the problem? He said, well, he was looking at it. He said, I've never gotten one of these before. He's in his 50s. He said, I've never gotten one of these before. And it broke my heart because I thought everybody got Christmas cards for Christmas. I never met anybody who hasn't received a Christmas card. So I thought to myself, how could, how could Christmas cards, you know, what is Christmas? It can't be just Christmas cards. It can't, it, Christmas can't just be presents under the tree because everybody doesn't get presents under the tree. Christmas can't just be spending time with family because everybody doesn't have family to spend time with. I just begin to think about all this, and God began to show me something. This is what we do traditionally. If you can, it's, it's what you do. But God began to reveal something to me and say, Brother Gary, <laughs> that's how the Lord speaks to me. Brother Gary, Christmas is not about these things. This, these gifts are good, uh, but they're not the greatest gift. They're not the best gift. Uh, they're not the, the gift that keeps giving. Uh, hallelujah. These gifts are okay. I'm not against them. Uh, but there's a greater gift uh, that you can give uh, on Christmas. Let me tell you a Christmas story. Luke chapter 2, verse number 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph 
also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Hallelujah. For all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. Because I'm about to tell you about the greatest gift ever given. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, we got to go to church. <laughs> Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, just like the angel said. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Isn't this, just, isn't this your life story? Once you hear about this Jesus, once somebody comes and tells you about Jesus, hey man, and then you say, well, let, I must see. I, I've got to go. I've got to be there. I've got to see this Jesus that you're talking about. And then you come and you get an experience with God and you're thinking, it was just like they said. It was just like they said. And now they said, we got to tell everyone. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. I'm ending right here. I'm closing. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, guests, friends and family, I give you the greatest gift ever given. He was born in a manger. He's the invisible made visible. The word made flesh. That which was, which is, and is to come. He's God robed in human skin. I give you Jesus Amen. of Nazareth. I want to tell you something quickly that happened to me Saturday. I was out filling up the, the propane tanks for the heaters for the church. And as I made my way into the place to get the propane tank filled, I saw a lady who had been to visit a church in Howell. I live in two small towns, basically, Howell and Fowlerville. And the good thing about that is, first of all, you run into your brothers and sisters all the time. Everywhere you go, you see saints of God. It's so cool. You're walking down the street. They beep the horn. You see them. It's really neat. Second of all, you see people who came to church and aren't there anymore all the time. Sister Wells, so you get to convict them <laughs> by your very presence. I saw a lady who had come to church and how many times with her kids, her older kids, and she was getting gas and, and she was leaving the pump frustrated because she tried to get $4 and some change in gas. And I thought that's a low amount. And they only let her get $2. I said, don't worry. I'm sure they'll figure it out. I'm sure you'll get your gas. And she came in and 
The lady said, I'm sorry, it's coming. I'll, I'm, I'm putting the rest of it. It'll be there. She said, okay. I said, there you go. You're, you're getting the rest of your gas. And then as she left, the lady said it was hard to do because it was bottles she was returning. And I thought to myself, I've been there before. She's returning bottles for gas. I know what that's like. So I said, can I add some money, please, to her gas bill? Well, yeah. I said, okay, here's some some money. I want you to, to put it on her gas bill. Oh, I felt the Holy Ghost. I felt God so strong. God impressed it upon me. And all the people around me, they were just in awe and amazement at what I was doing. And it just lifted the atmosphere, lifted, because there was a big line and people were getting, people were in a hurry and they were getting stressed out. Uh, but it lifted the atmosphere in that gas station. I walked out there and I told her, I said, keep pumping, there's more coming. She filled it up and When she was done, she came in, running in, and she gave me a hug, and she said, thank you. And I said, you're so welcome. Merry Christmas. Why am I saying this? Because of one failure of mine. I know I gave her some money for gas. I know I helped her out. But let me tell you what I really wanted to give her. The greatest gift. I wanted to give her the greatest gift, which is Jesus. I wish, looking back, I'm so glad I I helped her. That's that's not the issue. But looking back, I wish I would have, when I embraced her, I wish I would have just said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, receive ye peace. In Jesus' name, receive ye whatever it is you're looking for. In Jesus' name, God answer her prayer. In Jesus' name, give her strength, God. In Jesus' name. I wish I could have given her the greatest gift. I just gave her some money and And we're going to help people with money. We're going to give people clothes uh, at this church. Uh, We're going to, we're going to help people as best we can with food. Thank you, Jesus. But church, We're responsible for a hurting world. We're responsible for a world uh, that needs more than just a little bit of gas money. Uh, They need more than just a little bit of food to keep them going a little bit longer. Uh, They need more than winter coats. Uh, Amen. I'm not against those things. Uh, They need more than just visitation. Uh, They need Jesus. Will you stand with me? We must give them the greatest gift ever, Jesus of Nazareth, the born and living Savior. Let's worship the Lord just for a moment. God, melt somebody's heart right now, God. God, give somebody boldness right now. Jesus, put a face, put a face in somebody's heart right now. There's somebody you know who you've helped, but they're looking for more than just a little help. They're looking for more than than, than just some food. They need Jesus. Where the whole world knows it's Christmas. The whole world knows that there's a Savior that was born to take away the sins of the world. For God so loved the world.
make it the mission of this church uh, to reach anyone and everyone. Make it the mission of this church uh, to reach all those who are seeking, uh, all those who are hungry, uh, all those who are looking for something more, who need more. God, help us to bring them you. The more I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The more I seek you. God, don't let us sleep. Uh, don't let don't let me be, have rest. Uh, don't, God, don't don't let me find pleasure in anything, God, uh, until I be, lead people to you. Uh, until I find people and give them the greatest the gift uh, I can give them. The more I love you. Hallelujah. Convict my heart, Lord. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. This I worship so you, deep. Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. It's more than I can stay. Somebody just get to the feet I of God. Just get to the feet of God. It's overwhelming. I'm here to worship you, Jesus. I'm here, God, to give you praise, to give you glory. The cup in your hand. Worthy is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, this is your opportunity. Uh, today is your chance to, to get refreshed. Uh, hallelujah, to get renewed uh, in the Holy Ghost. I'm inviting anyone else to this altar. Uh, if you need a renewal, uh, if you need God to refresh you in the Holy Ghost, uh, if you need uh, to love him like you did the first time, uh, come on up uh, and get restored. Dig deep. Uh, God is calling you to something greater right now. Uh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And I love each and every one of you. Some I just love and some I have agape love. I will myself to love you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you. Have a merry, merry Christmas.